Hi. I've talked before about unit testing and migrating my informal approach to the CPP U-Test framework. I had a gap in my capability on that video though, um, in that unit testing wouldn't support and won't run under the FreeRTOS kernel. That's a bit of a problem for me and for some of my projects. The principle in unit testing is that we are testing small components of a solution in isolation. So for lots of functional testing, I don't need a framework to support FreeRTOS kernel. I do need it in some particular areas, particularly when network communication is involved, as mostly I do that using LWIP sockets, which are dependent on a real-time operating system. In this video, I'm going to talk about adapting the CPPU test framework to work with the FreeRTOS kernel. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. So when working in a test-driven approach, I want to be able to absolutely produce my clean application at the end of the day from my code pool, but also produce a unit test binary that is going to just run my tests. So it's a two binary strategy that we want from the same project. And we looked at this for the bare metal before. Both of those are going to run on our Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico W or another RP2040 board. Of course, you could potentially run some of the tests locally on your laptop. And there are ways of doing that, um, but that is outside of the scope of this video. What we're doing really today is, is looking at how we actually can run our tests with CPPU test on our Pico, but of course under the free RTOS kernel, so that we have the multitasking, memory management, uh, queues, uh, semaphores, and all of those capabilities there. So why would I want to use free RTOS kernel and make my life more difficult for testing purposes? Well, to be honest, free RTOS kernel actually makes my life easier. For a lot of problems, it makes developing things uh, a much easier thing to do because we can run uh, components as active agents. So I can have multiple separate active agents going about and doing their task and communicating when they need to. And that is a very much a design strategy for more complicated applications. For some libraries, we also need a service like FreeRTOS. For instance, LWIP sockets. So when I want to get socket communication across the internet working, and that underpins things like the World Wide Web, things like IoT frameworks, then I really need FreeRTOS to be out there to do that. If you'd like to know more about FreeRTOS and its capabilities from tasks to notifications, semaphores, a stream buffers, messaging queues, etc., then I've got lots of that on a course on Udemy, and I'll put a link in the description. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I normally talk about PCBWay in terms of PCB fabrication, which is the main service I get from them and the reason I came to know them. They recently sent me an example of their 3D printing though, and I was blown away by the quality. This is obviously an SLA based print rather than the FDM prints I do at home. On the naked eye though, I can't see the layers. It's just a perfectly smooth surface, beautifully made. So for robotic parts or cases for my next Pico project, I may well be getting these produced by PCB Way, along with the PCBs of course. So go check them out. As always, I'll share all the code on GitHub for this project, and I'll put the link in the description. The repo contains both the bare metal version that we looked through last time, of how to get that set up for the Pico, and the new free RTOS version that I'm going to talk about in this video. So we want a mechanism that I can build the clean application by just typing make, or ninja if you're on Windows and to be able to build a test binary with all of the unit tests in it, which I'll do by issuing the command make test. Both of course are going from the same code base. Our project structure is going to look as normal with the source, library 
and port code for those libraries. And then we've got the test uh, folder, which is going to contain the unit tests and the initiation script and my new platform that's going to work for the FreeRTOS platform. On the bare metal environment we looked at last time, everything really just ran out of the box. So we were able to configure CPBU test to just download itself as part of the CMake process, to configure itself, check what the environment looked like, and just basically work. For FreeRTOS, things are not that simple. We're actually going to have to put in a new platform port capability as code. We can still get the framework to download itself, but some of the configuration now is going to have to be a bit manual to tell it about that new platform port that we've got. And then we're going to have to initiate these um, unit tests from within a task, otherwise things are not going to work too well. Our platform is really about memory management. Because if you remember on FreeRTOS, we have lots of different heap configurations. So our CPPU test is actually doing checks around heap memory allocation, looking for memory leaks. So we've got to make it and the um, FreeRTOS's heap management process work and collaborate together. Generally, I use heap4. So this example is going to use heap4. Should be usable for all the, the other heaps generally. So CPP U-Test, well, the way that it actually handles memory management is it defines for C++ a um, system-wide new and delete to use its code for allocation and deletion of objects. It also provides its own versions of malloc and free, which are going to wrap the system versions of those. Now, all of those have now got to, of course, point to the free RTOS heap and we've got to link those across. Now our problem is that when I'm using FreeRTOS and C++, I actually am also going to allocate new and delete. So there's going to be potentially a conflict here. So for CPPU test code and those code only, I'm going to have to be really careful to not put in my new and delete system-wide configuration to make that use the free RTOS heap and instead allow that to go through CPP U-Test. There's another potential conflict that goes on here as well. If you're using the standard STL library and any of the container um, structures, then, you know, list, map, vector, etc., then they all also redefine new and delete. The problem is that CPP U-Test actually overrides the definition of new and delete via a hash define. So that's actually going to crash those STL libraries um, include files. There are several ways described to um, get over this problem on the CPP U-Test uh, homepage. I didn't get on terribly well with some of those suggestions. And what I've ended up doing in some of my projects is actually deliberately undefining new and then redefining new after I've included the STL container object library. That's a bit messy, but it does work and it is clean. So um, that's, that's my approach. Perhaps I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a future video. So let's have a look at the code then. So here we've got our repo and uh, we're going to go into the FreeRTOS folder, which is a separate project and it's going to set up this belt. So if we have a look at the top level make file, this is the same as we, what we were doing for bare metal. So really there are no real differences in here. This is as we had it before. We're including our subdirectory to build a source folder to actually build the main clean code and as uh, an excluded from all, so only when we ask tests to be built, we're going to actually build the stuff in the test folder, which is going to be our unit test framework. Now, I've had to do a slight change in the port world for FreeRTOS. So, for those who followed my code for a while, you'll know that I got a FreeRTOS config definition in here, which is really defining my um, port or FreeRTOS to run on the Pico. So it's got all of the idle memory management and some of the standard definitions and functions in there. It's also got the C++ code in there for um, 
to uh, overriding new and delete. Let me just bring that up for you. Here we go. So we are redefining operator new to use PV port malloc. So to actually use FreeRTOS's malloc code. Now for our CPP U test build, we don't want to do that. And so I've got a FreeRTOS unit definition here, which is again defining the FreeRTOS library port, but actually doesn't include that memory management, or uh, C++ uh, memory uh, allocations. So that's, that's a slight change in here. Now that one gets included in only in the test library world. So we're only going to use that if I include um, this and do a make test, and then it will include the freeRTOS unit.cmake. So it's not going to slow down the build too much. This um, cmake file here for the test environment is actually very similar to what we had previously. There are a couple of small changes. So after we've uh, fetched the cppu test project or library, we are going to um, uh, turn off the auto test builds as we did before so that their own tests we don't want them I'm going to turn off their um, standard CPP library uh, wrapping because that's going to crash some of my projects and I'm going to turn off their platform because I'm going to provide my own platform so uh, it won't now go and automatically try and work out which platform to use and insert that then within my actual execution uh, or, or executable code, we've got my uh, test main, as we did before. We've got my tests, uh, which are there. And then we're going to add in a platform, which is going to have all of the adaption to FreeRTOS. And then the source folders, the uh, source files we're actually testing. And finally, in the link, we're going to link in FreeRTOS kernel 8. And we're also going to link in FreeRTOS unit, which is that configuration and porting configuration of FreeRTOS without that memory management piece. Final bit I need to do is in the target compilation definition, I need to turn tell the SDK not to, to allow me to override allocations. So I need to provide that definition in there. So if we have a look at test, this is going to look a bit like a free Artos application now. So this is our main application. So I'm going to um, start up free Artos and start up the scheduler and start up a task, which is my main task. I need to be careful to give it enough um, stack space to be able to run all of my tests. And then within that main task, I'm going to run up the command line test runner and run it off and that's it. Um, it's pretty simple really to do that, all of this. So what's going on in my UTAS platform, this new platform? Well this is the bit where I'm actually doing the mapping of this into the world of FreeRTOS. So there are a set of functions here really the key ones that we would need to worry about are the memory allocation work where we're actually allocating um, using and freeing using, uh, here we go, here we got the um, PV port malloc and uh, I've had to write a reallocation in there and a V port free. So we're adapting that. Um, there are a lot of the rest of the stuff in here actually I copied from the existing GCC uh, port and platform. Um, it should be all, almost all, all the same. It's the really the stuff we want to worry about is the stuff around memory malocation. So the demo application I'm testing is really just a simple blink and external LED. I allowed the LED to be turned off in blink state, turned on in blink state, and actually to set the speed of its blink. And so the tests are really just checking that all of those things are happening. And it's doing that by looking at a counter which is showing the number of times that the blink has happened. So when I run this up, uh, we can see 
the blink test going through. They're quite slow because actually they're waiting for a period of time so that they can keep conferring against the uh, blink counter. And then we finally get those stats showing that the, all the tests have run and all the checks are successful. Hooray! Well done! Though quite a small step forward, this actually has provided a great additional tool to my project toolkit. Suddenly every test runs in a clean environment and every test gets te checked for memory leaks. There's lots more I could share on unit testing, from use of mocks, to forking tests into their own threads, to coverage metrics. Um, please do let me know what you think if there are other techniques you'd like to see in these videos and I can add them into the backlog. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video as it helps other people find it and it gives me good feedback that I'm doing the right things. And please hit the subscribe button so you get notified about future videos. Do take a look at my Patreon page as well. I'd really appreciate your support in keeping these videos coming. Remember, Patreons get access to my videos up to a week early. And of course, my personal gratitude. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.